time for the G Fuel review conclusion, which is long overdue. It was supposed to be done in September, but I recorded all the videos in advance, and when it came to editing the video, it was uh, the time the PC had to be boxed away, so I didn't actually make the final video. And I'm glad I didn't because I looked over all the video footage uh, recently and it was god awful. So I decided to start again. Um, not the entire process of sampling everything, it was just the whole video process. flavour that I've just mixed is the Sour Blue Chug Rug. Now this was one of the uh, the bonus ones that I did uh, after the uh, initial seven um, day taster. And um, you can read all the tasting reviews on the website but for convenience sake I'm going to do one um, now using the Sour Blue Chug Rug. So in my actual article that I wrote, uh, reviewing the flavours, um, I mentioned that it was uh, a very sour, sour drink, uh, more sour than the sour cherry, um, and I tasted mainly blueberry. Um, now, I don't mention anything about how this beverage smells, because I have a weak to non-existent sense of smell, um, which for some reason hasn't really affected my taste. Um, so yeah, we're gonna just have another quick sip. So when I just give it a good shake. So when I last tasted it, I said it just tasted like sour blueberry, even though the packaging clearly makes it look like it is uh, black currant. So we'll see if that's changed. Still sour but it is still blueberry. So this is something that I noticed with G Fuel is that um, several of the, um, the beverages are marketed strangely. So in the case of the Sour Blue Chug Rug it has the uh, images of uh, a blackberry um, or a blackcurrant if you want to say um, on the packaging but it doesn't actually taste like that, it tastes, in my opinion, of blueberry. Um, and then there's a few others, and I'm going to bring up the chart next to you know elaborate on that. So you've probably seen this on my website um, on the article. It's been developing as I've tasted the new flavors, and um, I've been putting them in the tier system. And you'll probably see. I've tried to go with the pictures that um, Gamma Labs actually provide where it's got the marketing materials on it. Um, any that don't have that little extra bit of, you know, the fruits or whatever on the side, it's because that particular, you know, um, flavour doesn't have uh, much in the way of artwork. So, um, like I mentioned with the Chug Rug, this is going to fill most of the screen for a moment. Here we go. So you can see on the marketing for the Chug Rug, which is in the B category, it's at the very end. It's marketed as blue, um, like blueberries, but on the actual packaging itself, those aren't blueberries. Those are a, um, a currant, I think, or a type of black currant or a blackberry. So, uh, yeah, it does taste like blueberry. It, it doesn't taste uh, anything like what the artwork depicts. And a couple of the other ones that are like this are um, the 
a rainbow sherbet flavour, which is again in the B category. That tasted more like ice cream, which it is marketed as there, but it's called a sherbet, and it it doesn't taste like a sherbet in my opinion. It tastes more like a um, slightly lemony ice cream um, flavour. So you know, there's there are a few that don't taste exactly like they say, and the ones that are down in the E and F category, those definitely don't taste like they they're marketed as. Green apple is so bitter and has no apple flavour at all to it. Um, it tastes very chemically. Um, the uh, cotton candy flavour, that one has a, a kind of cotton candy flavour for a couple of seconds and then it's just gone. It's, it's just like um, we had a, a medicine when me and my sister were younger. Um, the antibiotics and it was like uh, served on this plastic spoon. Uh, it was very pinkish, I think they called it Calpol. It reminds me of that and it doesn't taste very nice. Um, so those flavours all don't taste what they're marketed as exactly. Um, then you have what I like to call the red fruit syndrome. So as I just mentioned, um, red fruit syndrome is the wording I gave for the G Fuel flavours that are mainly occupied by red fruits like strawberry, raspberry, cherry, those type of, um, of fruits. And I only use the term because when I sampled all the red fruit flavours, which are your um, cherry limeade, your fruit punch, your phase berry, your sour cherry, your kiwi strawberry, your watermelon, and even um, the tropical rain. Um, the red fruit syndrome is where I say it tastes exactly the same, doesn't matter which of those flavours you have, it always tastes the same. Now there are exceptions, so in the term of um, tropical rain it doesn't suffer from red fruit syndrome even though it has red fruit in it. Uh, although if you drink it so many times in a row, so if I had it on Monday and then I had it on Tuesday and then on Wednesday, the red fruit starts to seep through more than the rest and it becomes very dull and boring. So uh, if you do go for tropical rain, I don't recommend having it every single day you have G Fuel, just uh, on the odd day so that you keep that initial punch of different flavours. But the likes of uh, Fruit Punch uh, and Phase Berry and even um, the two cherry flavours uh, are very similar to one another. Um, but I do personally recommend Cherry Limeade over the other ones because it does have that sour punch from the, the lime, even more sour than Sour Cherry. Um, so out of all the red fruit ones, I do just recommend the cherry lime made really, um, but to keep things a bit fresh, uh, kind of alternate between them so that you don't always just have the same one. So next on the agenda is talking about the, um, the tier system um, which I set on the uh, premise of three factors which is the taste, the um, refreshfulness, so if it dried my mouth out or made me more thirsty, um, and then finally it's uniqueness, so that's the three things that I based it on. And um, as you can see, the, the winning flavours were all fruit based, so they were based on natural flavours, uh, except for peach iced tea, but we'll get to that in a moment. Um, unfortunately, you also notice that most of the red fruit syndrome based ones are at the top. Um, and that, again, is because one, they actually do taste like what they say they are. Um, two, the um, drinks were very refreshing and tasted nice. And um, yeah, so. The the uniqueness side of it, that kind of put them down a peg, which is why they're not in the S rank, that's why they're in the A rank. Um, whereas the uniqueness from the C grade ones, which is your Twisted Candy, 
your red and gummy fish. Those ones are very unique. They do not taste like anything else other than obviously watermelon for some reason tastes exactly like red and gummy fish. Um, but they, I can't pinpoint exactly um, what flavourings they use for those two flavours of rage and gummy fish and the twisted candy. So they were in there for the unusual factor, but unfortunately they're not the most refreshing. Um, so they're not higher up on the tier, and they can probably be a bit too strange for people who are just starting out on G Fuel. Um, the ones that I recommend. Um, are at the very top obviously which are the peach mango, um, your um, cherry limeade, your peach iced tea and I would put the blood orange in there but it didn't, it didn't fit. Um, so you know those are the four I'd recommend and peach iced tea being the most unusual of the, uh, the four but if you're familiar with American tea it's usually iced tea um, then it's straight up your alley. I mean, if you drink Lipton's iced tea, it's very similar, but it's got that peach um, flavour rather than the lemon that we're usually used to in the Lipton's iced tea. Um, but you get the added bonus of the uh, energy boost, obviously. So it kind of beats Lipton's and it's got less sugar in it, so it's better. Um, so yeah, that's why those are in the top. Uh, tier, they none of those four flavors because blood orange technically would be in the S rank. Uh, none of those four flavors taste like one another. Um, even though you have peach mango and peach iced tea, it's very specific that the peach iced tea tastes like iced tea, whereas peach mango tastes like a peach mango squash, which is why they do taste different, and that's why they're both in the S rank. Um, so yeah, they, they were very refreshing, uh, they didn't dehydrate me, they didn't make me want to drink uh, a full bottle of my water because as people probably know, I drink lots of bottles of these and I uh, drank a few of them whilst doing the G Fuel uh, taster sessions, notably the, um, the very very bitter and rather gross uh, green apple flavour and the very bad aftertaste I got from the cotton candy flavour. Now as for the other flavours, um, red fruit syndrome kind of killed the opportunity for um, the fruit punch, the phase berry, uh, the cherry, sour cherry and the um, kiwi strawberry kind of killed their chances of getting in the S rank. They were refreshing, they do taste nice but those um, first three flavours in particular, they taste exactly the same as one another, they only have very subtle differences and um, if you blindfolded me and made me taste all three of them one after the other, shuffled them in order obviously so I didn't know which it was, I wouldn't be able to tell you which one was which because they they all taste so similar. Um, the, cherry limeade, um, the cherry limeade and the sour cherry taste similar to one another but the cherry limeade, limeade actually tastes better and more sour um, which is why I thought, you know, if you blindfold me I wouldn't even be able to tell the sour cherry apart from the um, the uh, phase berry or the uh, fruit punch uh, other than maybe it might be a little bit more sour um, but the, uh, the kiwi strawberry flavour tastes an awful lot like Robinson's summer fruit squash um, so yeah, that it kind of defeats the point of having G Fuel taste different to something that you already have. Um, the blood orange definitely tastes good. It tastes like um, flat tango, and blood orange flavour uh, tango is really nice as well. Um, but the uh, the blood orange one, I really really wanted to put it in the S rank, but it wouldn't fit. Uh, but that's because I was. Uh, not thinking about how many of these I would actually end up doing. This was only originally done for the first seven plus three extras that I had. Um, so yeah, that was a big mess up. <laughs> uh, now onto the B rank. The, um, the, the pink lemonade is really good, especially with ice, and I really recommend having it mixed with carbonated water or, you know, 
just plain fizzy fizzy water um, because then it really does taste just like a lemonade and if you've had real pink lemonade before it's made with grapefruit so it's quite sour and bitter uh, but pink, pink lemonade was really nice um, I actually like it better than the uh, the bottled the pink lemonade you can get um, the uh, I've already mentioned about the rainbow sherbet how the marketing confused me because it's marketed as um, a sherbet but all the artwork and even the way it tastes is very much more ice cream based so I I do like it it's very refreshing um, but it's just poorly labeled it really should just say rainbow ice cream <laughs> uh, and then the tropical rain one again really like that one it's refreshing but the thing is it suffers from the red fruit syndrome if you have it too many times in a row um, the blue chug rug it's sour I'm not keen on sour things like that um, and the flavour is very unusual. Uh, I still get a bit confused because it tastes, it does taste like blueberry to me. Um, but it's it is clearly marketed with a, a blackberry of some kind. Twisted candy, I really really like that. It tastes like a stick of rock. Um, but again, the marketing material is showing images of it being some other type of candy. I mean, I don't know what candy it would be based on, really, because I don't think I've had anything like that type of candy before. Um, but it does taste like rock, um, like a stick of rock. Uh, Raging, Gummy <laughs> Raging Gummy Fish is a, a really nice one. Again, it's unusual. Um, it tastes just like those uh, squidgy foam-like um, sweets you get from Haribo where the, the love hearts, they taste really nice. Uh, watermelon oddly tastes exactly the same as the Raging Gummy Fish flavour for some reason, I don't know why. I thought it was a mix up in the packaging but I always, I had um, the tub which is no longer with me because I donated that and um, there was a sachet as well that came with one of my new shakers and they tasted exactly the same as each other which was just like Raging Gummy Fish so I can't really recommend one over the other one I'd only say get watermelon if Raging Gummy Fish is out of stock it doesn't really taste like watermelon in my opinion um, the blue ice um, is a very unusual flavour I still cannot quite pinpoint what um, fruit it's supposed to be it looks like the same type of berry that they've used for the blue chug rug um, in the uh, marketing which looks like a blueberry of some kind but I'm, I'm, so, I'm so not sure what it's actually supposed to be it tastes okay but it's not one that I'm going to be going back to because it is a bit too strange for me um, and I've already mentioned I think that the cotton candy and the the uh, <laughs> the the green apple are uh, huge disappointments. Um, I still can't wrap my head around how they could have gotten the green apple so wrong. Uh, especially with how successful most of these other fruit flavours are. The, the, the best ones are the fruit flavours other than the watermelon which is very strange. I think I really am unsure what went wrong with that as well. It doesn't taste bad. It just doesn't really taste like watermelon. It tastes like fruit, but not watermelon. But the green apple is the biggest disappointment. It is so bitter. It doesn't taste like fruit. So that's the uh, the tier chart, and I, I'm still I'm still open to sampling more flavors, but it will have to wait for a while because I have a backlog of um, sachets to get through and I don't want to waste any of them and I need to bite the bullet and finish the green apple ones I've got because I've been putting it off finishing those last few sachets because I don't like that flavour at all. <laughs> now the last time that I did the um, the sessions to see if G-Fuel was actually working um, I got sick a lot but I, I do as a person get sick quite easily so it wasn't down to the beverage um, I did do some research on to the G Fuel website 
and found that whilst they do use a lot of natural ingredients, a lot of the flavours are actually um, artificial in some way. So it's like speaking of the um, the twisted candy. It's obviously a flavour that you can't just extract. It's already an artificial item. So the candy is already artificially processed and that means G Fuel has nothing natural to process from that. It's an artificial object, you know, artificial um, food source. So they replicate the, uh, the flavour using natural flavouring. So it's got things like apple or or peach or mango or strawberry or something so they, they merge a lot of natural flavorings together to replicate as close as possible to that artificial flavor now I don't understand why the likes of the cotton candy one is so bad um, and I especially don't understand why the green apple flavor is really bad either considering that it's um, a natural fruit they could just extract from apples, but they I don't understand. It says on the on the uh, the label that it is used um, in the makeup of that flavour, um, but I, I I don't know I don't know what went wrong. <laughs> um, now in terms of health benefits, the calorie intake is low. It's um, it, it's it's so low that I don't even really bother to count it. Um, it's better than having a cup of coffee first thing in the morning. It is miles better than having the, uh, the Monster Energy drinks because when I was at university I used to indulge in Monster Energy drinks and especially Red Bull on a daily basis, often having three to four cans a day at university which is not good. It's not good for your health and it I was crashing throughout the day and having to drink another one to keep my levels up and my focus would be terrible. If I'd have known about G Fuel <laughs> back when I was at university, I probably would have done a lot better. So the final few things that I need to mention are to wrap up the whole article which was the um, session where I tasted G Fuel um, to see if it would work for me. Um, as an artist, as a gamer, day-to-day uh, -day activities, and as I probably mentioned time and time again in the article itself, I didn't experience any crashes in energy levels, which is already a big tick in the box for um, being a substitute for likes of uh, a cup of coffee or a um, definitely the energy drinks that are av already available on the market. Um, now, in terms of whether it improved anything, I really didn't see any big improvements in my um, level of focus and concentration doing artwork. Um, my motivation is usually a key factor into how I do my artwork, uh, rather than anything like an energy drink. Um, what it does help with, though, is to keep me alert whilst I'm working so um, instead of working and being all like oh, I'm so tired uh, I, I just want to do this work and then not being aware of things going on in the background um, G Fuel actually has helped me be like uh, yeah I'm working and it's like oh there's some there's something there there's something going on uh, I need to be aware of that um, so it has helped me be more aware of my surroundings because of the energy levels being higher and me not having to drag myself to do my work. Um, but the, the level of focus on the work hasn't changed. It's still as turbulent as ever. Um, in terms of playing video games, it has improved my reaction, reaction speeds as well. Um, so when I play games like Red Dead Redemption 2 or Assassin's Creed, uh, where I might have just been dawdling about and then an enemy comes along I, I can react quicker to uh, that enemy now rather than being like oh, oh, what, what, what do I do? <laughs> and it's not just down 
to uh, how long I've been playing these games for. I've been playing the likes of Assassin's Creed and back from Red Dead Redemption 1. I've been playing them for years. So it's not down to um, being new to the games, it's, it's just down to my level of energy and focus. And having the G Fuel in the morning has wound up uh, an, an improvement for how I am able to play those games. So finally, would I actually recommend G Fuel? Um, yes and no. Now, the yes side of it, I would recommend it to people who are, as the tagline says, uh, into esports or hardcore gamers, you know. Um, in terms of people who want to do um, their profession better, whether it's like um, sports or or like artwork. Um, the sports side, I think they have a hydration formula which will be better for you because G Fuel does contain um, enough caffeine per serving, which would be one shaker um, is equal to a large cup of coffee. Um, so it's it's got that caffeine in it, which is a dehydrator, which is why some of the drinks left my mouth feeling really dry. Um, and after a while drinking it, I got used to it, and the ones that started out making my mouth extremely dry started to just make it a little bit dry. Um, so if you're doing sports, not esports, but actual sport, you know, physical sports, um, I wouldn't recommend G Fuel because of the caffeine levels. But if you still want to try it, go for the hydration formula and not the base formula. Um, in terms of the artwork side of things, um, if you like your cup of coffee in the morning uh, but want to try something different, a cold drink that will keep your energy levels up, um, I would recommend G Fuel. But if you want it warm, I'd stick to your coffees because I've tried G Fuel now, uh, room temperature, uh, slightly above room temperature and with ice and to be honest it tastes better cold the colder it is the better it tastes um, and is someone who likes to have a cup of tea or a cup of coffee now and again I, I'm not fully substituting my caffeine intake with G Fuel but it's one of those things where I'll have it at first thing in the morning to get me going and maybe later in the day if it's cold outside I'll have a cup of tea or coffee instead. So if you have any more um, suggestions for G Fuel flavours then please send them to my website's email address which is zoopabooworks at gmail.com and when I have um, used my current box of sachets up uh, I will start sampling more flavours and if you do have any questions about G Fuel, um, I'll try my best to answer them. Uh, a couple of your answers that you might be seeking would already be answered maybe on my article, which is on my website. Um, but if you do have any questions that haven't been answered by that article or this video, then please drop them in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer where I can. And if you are interested in trying G Fuel for yourself, then I've popped a referral code in the description box below, um, which you can get $5 off your first order through G Fuel. And uh, it also helps, you know, pay towards the site that I'm using as well. So it's a bit of a bonus for both of us. Um, and again, as personal recommendation, um, Try not to get too many of the red fruit flavours in one go. If you're first starting out with G Fuel, get one of the red fruit flavours. I would personally recommend Cherry Limeade. And then grab yourself something a bit more unusual, a bit more uh, exotic. Something like your Twisted Candy, your Red Raging Gummy Fish, um, and maybe even the, uh, the Rainbow Sherbet. I keep wanting to call it Rainbow Ice Cream. <laughs> Um, but the, those are my personal recommendations and if you love iced tea um, I would recommend the peach iced tea flavour as well uh, so that concludes the G Fuel review video 
um, I will be doing more samplings eventually. So always check back on the article if you want to find out what ones I've tasted recently or the ones that I've tasted in the past. And I hope to catch you next time.